When you want to detect mouse clicks on a 3D object in your screen or in your scene, there are actually two ways to do it. The first way, which is the more difficult way, is to create some kind of a ray casting algorithm. And uh, you also need to, to the, a way to actually detect a line intersection with those free, uh, 3D objects. And so it's not the easiest to implement. And the second way, which is the easier, is to actually do uh, color picking. So for this, you will need to have two frame buffers. Uh, the default frame buffer, which is the visible buffer, and uh, a custom frame buffer, which is the pick buffer, where each object has a different color. So I'm just going to show you the scene. I already typed out the code. So if I click, if I click on an empty area, nothing happens. It just prints out the color buffer bit, uh, the color of the color buffer bit, which is 0, 0, 0. And if I click on, let's say, on this left cube, it starts to rotate. And it, this left cube uh, has a color in the custom frame buffer red. So 255 red, 0 green, 0 blue. Uh, if I click Again, it stops rotating. And the same for the middle cube. So if I click, it starts rotating. If I click again, it's, it stops. And the same for the right cube. So under the hood here, we have two frame buffers. So this, the left is the visible, what we are seeing, and the right is the non-visible, the, the peak buffer. So when I click, with my mouse on the left cube, I'm just clicking on this r red cube. So, and based on its color, I'm just can rot. I, I'm just able to actually uh, tell OpenGL to actually rotate this cube. And uh, so, this has a red color, this has a green color, and this has a blue color. And with the same technique using color picking, I created, I'm still devel developing this, this mini game, which is an isometric game. And it uses Piglet, and it also has two frame buffers, the visible buffer and the peak buffer, or the, where, where the color selection happens. So, as you can see, it is now uh, an isometric uh, map. So if I click on one of these tiles, it just selects that tile. It draws this selection box around it. And as I said, this also uses uh, color picking. So let me show you something. If I go to Sublime, here is the code for for this isometric. And if I comment out this line, which binds the custom frame buffer, and also save it and now run it again now as you can see each of these tiles has a different shade of gray and based on its color i can select these tiles so it start with starts with this dark gray and it ends here with this light gray so okay now let's Let's take. Let me take, or let me show you the code uh, for this scene. So first of all, I created here some global variables, mos x and mos y, and they start at zero zero, and also created a red rotation boolean false, green rotation false, blue rotation false, and a picker which is also false. Then I created uh, a mouse motion callback for GLFW and it just sets the global mouse underscore x and mouse underscore y to the x and y position of the mouse. Here is a mouse button call box callback, so when I click with the mouse, so I'm using the global picker, and if, mouse, if the button is the left button and the action is press, I'm setting the picker to true. And the third function is the pick function. 
So this actually, this does actually the color picking. So here I'm using the red global red rotation, green rotation, blue rock, blue rotation, and the picker. And using the GL read pixels, GL open GL function, uh, it needs the mouse X and the mouse Y position. These two arguments are the width and the height of the. So we are picking only one pixel, one by one. G, uh, it returns uh, the underlying underlying color as GL RGB, so red, green, blue, as GL unsigned byte. And here I'm printing out the colors. So if I click on this left, it prints out that this left cube in the custom frame buffer has a color of 255.00, so red, green, blue. And if I click on this one, it the red is 0, the green is 255, and the blue is also set to 0. And if I click on the empty, in the custom frame buffer, uh, the clear color is set to black, so it prints out 0, 0, 0. Okay, so... Uh, let me uncomment this line, so it prints the data, so here we are indexing data at index 0, data at index 1, and data at index 2. If you print out the data, and let me click here, as you can see it prints out as a hexadecimal value, so FF, which, which means that uh, the green or the red and zero and zero for the green and the blue. Okay, let's comment this out. So here I'm just asking if data at zero is 255, then the red rotation should be, um, so this is just switches. So if the red rotation is true, it will be not true, so false. And L, if the data 1 is 255, the green rotation will be not green rotation. So if it is false, it will be true. If it is true, it will be false. And uh, here, L, if data at index 2 is 255, then they set the blue rotation to not blue rotation. So just switch the two. And also set back the picker. So this mouse button callback sets the picker to true and this pick function sets the picker back to false so it only picks for one frame now let let me take a look here in the vertex shader nothing changes but in the fragment shader i have created two new uniforms one is the eye color so it is a type of integer vector free and I also created an integer type int called switcher. And if the switcher is zero, then we are drawing to the default frame buffer. Else, if the switcher is not zero, so it's, it, it is one or two or anything else, then the out color will be a vector four of i color dot r divided by 255, the i color dot g or the green divided by 255, and the eye color that blue divided by 255. So it will put the colors between 0 and 1. And uh, use 255.0 and here also 255.0 because otherwise uh, it will divide it as an integer, not as a float. So here nothing is changing. Here is the cube buffer. Here is the cube indices, uh, here is the cube VAO, and here are the textures for the cube, and here we are generating the picking texture for the custom frame buffer. So I'm called it pick texture, and bind this texture and generate a, a text image 2D. So as you can see, the last argument is set to none. So it's by when it starts, it's just an, an empty texture. And then we are generating a frame buffer object using the glgen frame buffers, binding the frame buffer object. 
and creating a frame buffer texture 2D. So GL frame, frame buffer color attachment 0, GL texture 2D and using the pick texture here. And also just unbinding the frame buffer and unbinding the texture. So actually with these um, eight lines I created the custom frame buffer and set I am set the the, this texture to this to use this um, I mean I'm set at this uh, custom frame buffer to use this this texture and here are just the usual stuff here I'm getting the eye color location from the shader and also the switcher location from the shader I created here cube positions so the first cube is negative 1 or negative 2 on x 0 y 0 z the second cube is at the center and the third cube is 2 on the x and 0, 0 on the y and z. And also created these peak colors. So as you can see the first cube has a color of red, so 255, 0, 0. The second color, uh, I mean the second cube has a color of green and the third cube has a color of blue. So this sets the colors in the custom frame buffer or the peak buffer and here in the main loop main application loop i'm just clearing out the color buffer bit uh, set uh, first the, set the clear color for the default frame buffer clearing out the default frame buffer and the color and also the depth creating here a rotation matrix and here I'm setting the switcher location to zero so when it is zero it means it draws to the default frame buffer so here in the shader we are asking if switcher is zero then out color should be uh, the texture uh, so the default frame buffer and here I'm creating just a for loop looping through the cube positions so this um, list and creating a model matrix for each cube and if i is zero then bind the create texture and if red rotation is true then upload the rotation y times the model matrix so it the rotation times the model and else if red rotation is not true then just upload the model matrix so actually model matrix is just positions the cube left middle or to the right and this one so the first uniform matrix uh, translates and also rotates the cube and elif i is one do uh, bind the metal texture and if uh, green rotation is true then apply the rotation uh, matrix times the model matrix and if it's not true then apply the just the model matrix and else so if i is 2 bind the bricks texture and if blue rotation is true then rotate the third cube and if it is not true then just translate it so don't rotate it and then i'm just calling the draw elements so this is responsible for drawing to the visible or to the default frame buffer and here comes the the non-visible or the custom frame buffer so i added a comment draw to the custom frame buffer or or dash the peak buffer so here i'm setting the first thing i'm setting the switcher location to one and i'm binding the frame buffer so the fbo setting the clear color to 0, 0, 0 uh, in this uh, custom frame buffer so if I go back to Inkscape as you can see its clear color is black and I'm also clearing out the color buffer bit and depth buffer bit in this custom frame buffer and here I'm just looping through uh, once again uh, on the cube positions list creating a peak model and uh, setting the eye color so which is which is this uniform so sending to this eye color uh, pick colors at eye 
So in the first iteration it, it will be this color, in the second iteration it will be this color, and in the third iteration it will be this color. So red, then green, and the last will be blue. So I'm also uploading the model matrix to this uh, custom frame buffer to actually position these uh, cubes in the custom frame buffer and actually draw to this custom frame buffer so which will look like this in the right side and lastly not lastly but then I'm asking if picker is true so when I click with uh, with the mouse button so this is glfw callback picker will be true in that case if picker is true then it will call the pick function and the pick function where it is and the pick function is this one so it just reads the pixels at mouse position and it reads only one pixel so its width and height is one set to one one and it sets based on the returned color it sets the red rotation or the green rotation or the blue, blue rotation and it, and it also resets the picker to false so it only runs once in one frame so in the last line i'm just unbinding the custom frame buffer so this is how uh, you can do easily mouse picking using opengl and this technique is also applicable in uh, Pyglet if you want to use inside Pyglet.